How's it going everyone? My name is Adam from Sinister Custom Cycles again. Doing a video this time, I know I promised in my last video I was going to do it on the crank bearings. I'm actually going to wait for a couple days until I get the rest of my parts in for my next build. So I can actually show you on the parts themselves rather than just telling you uh, how to do it. I'd much rather show you firsthand on the parts themselves. So this video I'm going to do something a little bit more fun. I'm going to cover the differences between a two-stroke and a four-stroke engine. As you can see on my bike, I'm going to be using the HS 49cc four-stroke gas engine. It's going to be the 4G model with a belt drive, automatic clutch on it. Straight gas on the four strokes, so pull up to a pump, regular gas goes right into the tank. Absolutely no clutch lever on this, it's just going to be twist and go. You're going to have a pull start on your right side. I've ran this in 30 degree weather before and with a choke on, second pull at most, a lot of times I can get it fired on the first pull uh, no matter what. Another nice thing about the four strokes, they are going to be quiet and they're also going to be clean. So no smoke coming out of them, very efficient quiet, uh, just an all-around great engine, straight gas, so no mixing and worrying about ratios, anything like that, like with a two-stroke. No clutch lever, just pull, let it warm up, and twist the throttle and go. One thing about the four strokes you're going to notice, they're going to be a lot bigger than a two-stroke engine. So looking down here, uh, it is going to be pretty wide. It's going to take up quite a bit of space. Also on the length and height, uh, so much so that with the four-stroke kits, you are going to get a widened crank set. You can kind of see there how wide the cranks are, plus the arms for the pedals are also molded to be out a little bit wider so you can pedal and clear the engine. Kind of try and get you the best view here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, here you can really see how much wider the pedals are than a normal crank set that comes on the bike. Because the engines are so big, it's kind of limited to what bikes you can use them on. The most popular models are going to be the four st or the beach cruisers. And you can do it on other bikes if you go with a large frame. So if you're talking a V-frame, like on a mountain bike or road bike, you're going to want to go up to about a 21 to 23 inch frame in order to have the room to fit the four stroke. Now let's kind of cover the two strokes. I don't have one to show you because I'm four stroke all the way but I can't explain the differences to you. First thing, starting. You're not going to have a pull start. You're going to have a clutch lever. You're going to pedal up to speed and then pop the clutch and that's how your engine's going to start. Another thing, uh, you're going to have mixed gas. So if you do pull up to a gas station, you're either going to want to buy the oil there or keep oil with you or pre-mix it and just keep it in a big can at home. This is kind of the biggest pain and also uh, the crucial part because if you don't get your ratios correct, you can do severe damage to your engine and even fry your engine. If you add too much oil into your gas mixture, you're not really going to do any uh, real harm to it. You're going to smoke a little bit more, maybe drop a little performance, and at the worst, fall out of plug. If you put too little oil in there, you are going to fry your engine in a hurry. Another thing about them, granted they are smaller, so you have a wider range of frames you can fit them in. Uh, even on the beach cruisers here or any other bike, they're so small that you don't even need the wide crank set on it. So you do have more options that way, however two strokes are a lot noisier and they're also going to be a lot dirtier. Uh, so they're going to smoke because of that oil mixed in with the gas. So something to kind of keep in mind there. They are going to be a little bit more torquey on the, uh, off the start and they're also going to be a little bit faster on the top end. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, no matter how much you uh, what kind of two-stroke you have, you can only do so much with the gearing. Uh, when you start getting into changing the sprocket sizes or uh, even a shift kit, then you can get your higher speeds, better torque, and you can even accomplish that with a four-stroke. Two-strokes are going to have the edge on modifications. You can do endless, endless amounts of upgrades to a two-stroke engine as far as the heads and uh, reed valves, things like that, to where you can really uh, modify and get a lot more power than a stock uh, two-stroke. Half the cost also, you're going to pay about double depending on which four-stroke you're going for. Uh, this is just the HS model. 
uh, just a Chinese import model. You can go up to the Hondas, they're a lot more expensive, but your reliability is a lot better with those. Another thing with the four strokes, they are going to be a lot more reliable. They're going to be a lot, uh, you're probably going to get about 10 to 15,000 miles and counting with no problems from what I've read online from multiple blogs and forums. Also uh, videos I've seen that people have over 15,000 miles, no issues. Two strokes, I haven't really read much from anyone that gets more than about 5,000 without having to do some work to them. So that's something to keep in mind when you get into uh, picking up an engine. Do you want it to last or do you want it fast? Uh, I want mine to be problem free and I want to get a lot of use out of it personally. So that's the differences between a four stroke and a two stroke. Uh, just to kind of wrap it up, four strokes, a lot less maintenance. They're also going to take a lot more riding in the heat. Two strokes I've heard on multiple places where if you're running in high heat, uh, 80s, 90s, 100 degree weather, for anything more than half hour or 45 minutes, you're going to want to shut them down, let them cool down for about 15 or 20 minutes. On the four strokes, I've ran mine in uh, low to mid 90s and I've had mine going for about hour and a half, two hours straight. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. So something to keep in mind depending on where you're at, what you're doing with it. Uh, kind of base that off your decision and what I've said in this video. Any comments or questions on this, please let me know. Leave it in the comment section of YouTube or I'll also leave my email up here and you can email me direct. Subscribe. I'll have a lot more videos coming up here soon. How-tos, what I'm working on, a lot of little things that I'm developing, a lot of issues that I hear people running into. I'm going to be doing videos on that. How to fix it. I'm also playing around with uh, searching for possibly new engines that haven't been used on uh, this application before. So that might be coming up this summer too. In the meantime, I'll have a lot more videos like this coming up. Any suggestions for videos, please let me know. Uh, in the meantime, that's about it. My next video coming up in a couple days when I get the rest of the parts in will be on the crank set. So have yourselves a great day, and until the next video, talk to you later.